Back in 2012, when Sleeping Dogs was released, one year before GTA 5, I remember picking it up and playing the hell out of it. It was essentially GTA, but set in Hong Kong, and I remember playing it whilst waiting for the release of GTA 5, which seemed like ages. Sleeping Dogs did get a definitive edition since release, which did improve graphics along with some gameplay tweaks, but it didn't change anything major. So how does this game hold up in 2023? Is it worth playing? Let's find out. Did you play Sleeping Dogs back in the day? Give the video a quick like rating if you did, and let's see how many people played this game. Graphics. Back in the day, I remember being impressed by the game's graphics. Despite playing it in 2023, it doesn't actually look too bad, and Hong Kong looks quite impressive at night. Character models do look a bit dated in places, but don't look too horrific. The fact that this game holds up 11 years later shows you how much care was put into it. Visually, you aren't going to be put off. The open world. As mentioned, the game is set in Hong Kong, which was a nice change as we haven't really had any open world games set here before. Driving on the other side of the road will throw you off if you've been playing GTA for years, but it's bloody amazing experiencing a totally different setting for once. The map is interesting as it appears quite small, but once you start exploring, it's a perfect size due to it being packed with different activities and things to see. You can take part in cockfighting, karaoke, martial arts training and gambling, which is quite unique compared to other open world games. Having things to do is a must and it does just that. The setting really feels lived in for the most part despite the crowd density being lower than games being released now and it's really nice to explore a completely unique setting compared to other games in the genre. At no point does it feel soulless or lifeless and it's an open world that stuck with me for a while which can only be seen as a compliment. The gameplay. So this is where the game shines. It's very similar to GTA, where you can steal cars and pretty much do whatever you want, where it becomes unique is when you start beating up enemies like Bruce Lee and having the freedom to brutally kill enemies using your surroundings and picking up a variety of different weapons to beat the piss out of people. For example, there is a mission where you beat up a load of thugs in a nightclub and you can literally grab some bloke's head and smash it through a fish tank so he swallows bloody old Nemo. I mean, how satisfying is that? Not many games allow you to do this and you can also smash some heads through speakers as well. Using your surroundings is just really damn cool and it feels like you're in a movie at times. The combat is just really enjoyable and it used to be one of my favourite parts of the game, mainly due to how brutal it feels at times. They don't hold back on blood. I feel it's also due to the fact that GTA never really focused on the combat aspect and I don't know why but I just found it so damn satisfying beating up enemies and preferred it over using guns. There is also a full upgrade system here which is bloody brilliant and it gives you a reason to obtain collectibles so you can unlock more moves and abilities. Fighting just doesn't ever seem to get boring and don't get me wrong, it's no Batman Arkham game but I still found myself enjoying the hell out of it. Gunplay is also fun but it isn't the most fluent and driving through the city is a blast but it does feel very arcadey which might not be to everyone's taste. Coming from GTA 4 back in the day, this was a good thing as GTA 4 driving felt difficult and more realistic. Whilst this feels a lot more user friendly, it's also really cool being able to jump from one car to another and hijack it. It just makes you feel like a bit of a beast. Along with the insane combat, I guess it just makes you feel like Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible or some bollocks. Instead of playing with Nico from GTA 4, who is your standard human with a bastard sized brain who just wants to kill people with guns. The addition of leaderboards whilst driving was also a really cool idea as at times it would motivate you to beat your friend's scores in different aspects of the game as it literally records everything. There is also a good amount of customization here too with lots of different clothes to buy and loads of vehicles. The bonus outfits were also a nice touch where you can dress up like Agent 47 or even Rico from Just Cause. You can even buy a bloody pet for your apartment and go for a piss in the toilet. Customization was something that was quite limited in GTA 4 at the time, so it was amazing to be able to have this level of customization. Parkour was also a welcoming feature in this game. 
as once again, this wasn't something at the time that was done too much in open world games, apart from Assassin's Creed. It's nowhere near as good as AC, but it's still fun to do during certain missions and areas around the map. It just gives the game a bit more depth. The story. So like many other aspects of this game, the story is also very unique. You play as an undercover cop in Hong Kong who is secretly trying to take down the triads whilst earning their trust in the process. It's great because normally we are used to playing as the criminal in these types of games. This time, we get to see both sides of the story, and I really enjoyed it and was gripped from the start. As you progress, you become torn between the feds and the triads, which does create some interesting conflict. I found that the story was very memorable, and if you haven't played it before, I highly recommend you do. It just feels very refreshing, and you do end up caring for the characters, which you don't seem to do these days in more recent games. Games. The story is one of the game's main strengths, and it still very much holds up today. So overall, should you play Sleeping Dogs in 2023? 100% yes. Setting the childhood nostalgia aside, it still holds up now, and it has been trending lately on Twitter, with more and more people playing it for the first time and demanding a long-awaited sequel. This is great to see, as I feel this game has been forgotten about over the years. If we did get to see another installment, imagine how good it could be, potentially. Due to how unique this game was, from its gameplay and setting, all the way to its story, it can certainly be its own thing and not be in the shadow of GTA. Yes, it's not perfect, and it won't play as fluent as other games releasing now, but it's definitely worth revisiting or playing for the first time. It's one of those hidden gem open world games that a lot of people missed or just forgot about. Hopefully after seeing this video, you may want to pick it up. Let me know in the comments if you have played it before. I would love to see your thoughts on it and whether you would like to see a sequel. And if you would like to find out whether the new Cyberpunk 2.1 update is worth playing or not, and this was just my complete honest take on it, just go ahead and click the card on screen to check out that video. You definitely don't want to miss it. Thank you guys as always for watching and have a great rest of your day.